Hey guys, Scott from Fright Props here, and today I wanted to do a quick video showing off a few uh, features of the Peekaboo that we get a lot of questions about uh, relating to using a normally closed trigger, uh, specifically a laser sensor, and opening a magnetic lock. We've had a lot of requests recently from people who want to shine a laser, hit a target, and open a magnetic lock, and they want to use a Peekaboo to do that, which is a good choice, uh, but you have to do a couple things to the Peekaboo to make it work. Uh, there are some quirks uh, when it comes to uh, a lot of the laser sensors available on the market that require you to sort of uh, change some of the default settings of the peekaboo in order to make that work as you desire. Here we have one of our light and laser sensors. How this sensor works, you can see there are four wires, two wires for power, a positive and a negative, and then two wires that trigger once the laser sensor detects a laser. The quirk with these sensors is they're actually a normally closed sensor. That means that they're constantly triggering until a laser hits the sensor when they stop triggering. That's the opposite of how most triggers work. Say a simple push button won't trigger at all until the button is pressed down, at which point it triggers. So this is the opposite. It's triggering all the time until it senses an input and then it stops triggering. So with that in mind, how do we interface this sensor with our peekaboo? Well, it's not too big of an issue. We just have to remember that we're using a normally closed trigger, so we have to set the peekaboo to accept a normally closed trigger. By default, they'll set a normally open trigger, like a standard uh, step mat or a hand switch or any of those usual types of triggers you might encounter uh, day to day. In order to switch the trigger input of the peekaboo to accept a normally closed trigger, all we're gonna do is we're going to hold down the one and two buttons and we're gonna plug in power and let it boot up. Just wait for the red light to flash, and then we can let go. Now you notice the peekaboo starts triggering right away. You can see the inputs are flashing, the red light is blinking. So basically in this state, the uh, peekaboo is constantly triggering. It'll stop triggering once we connect our normally closed trigger. So let's go ahead and do that now. We'll unplug the peekaboo so it stops uh, freaking out at us. And we'll go ahead and wire up our light sensor. As always, the best resource for finding diagrams on how to hook up different sensors is our support and training center on the website. This is a diagram I printed off from the support center that shows you how to wire up the light and laser sensor. And I'm just gonna use it as my guide when I wire up our sensor here to make sure I get everything right. Okay, so if we look at our diagram, I usually just kind of try to go left to right from the sensor. So you can see we have the uh, positive power wire here, then the negative power wire, and then the two green wires, the trigger wires. So we just trace our wires. The positive wire will go into the positive terminal of the trigger input. Go ahead and do that. Okay, our negative wire goes to the negative input of the trigger terminal. It looks like also the next wire, the first of the two green wires, goes there as well. So we're going to take both those wires, the first of the two green wires and the negative wire, and put those together into the negative terminal of the trigger input here. Okay, and our last wire is the second green trigger wire here, and that just goes to the end of the trigger terminal. Okay, so now that we have our light and laser sensor connected to our peekaboo, we can go ahead and power up the peekaboo and test the sensor. You'll notice that the peekaboo is no longer continually triggering. It's not flicking the outputs on and off because we have our normally closed trigger attached. We can go ahead and take a laser and shine it at the sensor and it will trigger the peekaboo. For these sensors, any visible range laser or bright light at a close range will work to trigger the sensor. So now that we have the sensor connected to the peekaboo and we verified the sensor's working, the next step will be to connect our magnetic lock. For wiring up the magnetic lock, we have another handy diagram from the Support and Training Center, which you can find at frightprops.com FAQ. 
So once again, we're just gonna go ahead and follow the wiring diagram. My magnetic lock here. Magnetic lock has two wires, a positive and a negative. You'll notice uh, the diagram shows us the positive and the negative coming from the lock. It also has a jumper wire, which we'll need to install as well. I usually like to start wiring with the jumper wire. So you can see here we have a jumper wire in the diagram going from the trigger positive over to the common terminal of the relay output that we're going to be using, which is relay one in this case. So I have a small length of 22 gauge low voltage wire here, and we're just going to go ahead and wire that into place. You'll notice that we already had the wire from the sensor going into that terminal. That's okay. The two wires can share the same terminal. We're just going to go ahead and twist them together and reinsert back into the terminal. And then tighten down. Okay, so the jumper wire is in the positive of the trigger. We're just going to bring it over into the common terminal of our relay output number one. Okay, now we have our jumper wire in place. We can move on to the wires coming from the magnetic lock. We'll go ahead and do our negative wire first. So the negative wire goes to our trigger, goes to the negative of the trigger terminal. So we already have a couple wires there, but that's okay. We're just gonna go ahead and open the terminal and insert our mag lock wire in with the rest of the wires that are already there. And we'll tighten that terminal back down. And the last wire is the positive wire from the mag lock, which will go into the normally closed terminal on our relay output one. Again, you want to use normally closed in this case because we want the lock to be on, powered on, that is locked until the peekaboo tells it to power off and open. If we wanted the lock to be open and then close when triggered, we'd be using the normally open terminal. But we're going to use the normally closed, which is what you usually want to use for magnetic locks. So we'll just go ahead and take the positive wire from the mag lock over to the normally closed terminal on relay output one and secure it in place. All right, so by following our wiring diagrams, we've gotten the sensor and the mag lock wired up to the peekaboo. Next thing we have to do is power up the peekaboo and then program it. Go ahead and power it up. You'll notice the mag lock locked as soon as we powered it up. Sensors powered on. But if we haven't done any programming and we just go and trigger the peekaboo, you'll see that the peekaboo just runs its default program, which isn't what we want to happen. In most cases, what you'd want to happen is that somebody activates the laser sensor with the laser and the lock opens for a certain amount of time, enough time to either allow the door to swing open if it's uh, spring-loaded or enough time for players to access whatever had been locked previously. To do that, we're going to have to program the peekaboo. And it's a pretty simple process. The part that people get hung up on most commonly is they want, for instance, the door to unlock as soon as this is triggered, but they want it to stay unlocked for a certain amount of time. And everything on the peekaboo is done in real time. So all we have to do is just make our program as long as we want the door to stay open for. We have up to two minutes total recording time, so that's the maximum amount of time that the lock can stay open. So to program our lock, we're just gonna hit record, and we're just gonna hold down the number one button for as long as we want the lock to stay open for. Let's say it's five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. Let go, and we'll hit record again. Now the peekaboo is just going to mimic exactly what we just did every time this laser sensor is triggered from here on forward. So if we go ahead and activate the laser sensor, you'll notice the lock open. One, two, three, four, five, and the lock closes. If you want to adjust how long the door stays open, you just change your programming. Just hit record and hold down the one button for as long as you want the door to stay open. You can be up to two minutes long. So that does mean that if you want your door to stay open for two minutes, you have to sit here for two minutes holding down this number one button. But uh, it's a little bit easier than having to use, say, a computer or some other scripting language in order to program that feature. So we can just sit here and hold down this button for as long as we want. The door or the lock will stay unlocked 
as long as we have the button held down. And we can go ahead and then release the button when we think our time is up, lock will shut, tap record again to save the program. And that's it. So now when we activate the sensor, Peekaboo will go ahead and play its program. It'll now play the longer program, so it'll now stay open for as long as I held the button down during that last uh, segment. And it'll go ahead and close again once the program has finished running. Alright, so that is a quick overview of how to use a normally closed light and laser sensor with a peekaboo to open a magnetic lock. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them as a comment on this video or send us an email at sales at Thanks!